this weekend we've got Tony and Louise from Kafka Diva uh, staying with us and so I have set up the camera uh, and pressed the button, waited for a couple of minutes, had a bit of a chat with, uh, with Louise and then I left her uh, to chat to Mr J. Right, well, as well as playing with Kafka Diva, uh, I also uh, sing as a backing vocalist with Dark Side of the Wall, who are a big boy tribute act uh, from Coventry. An award-winning award tribute winning act, tribute. Thank, you. thank you. I know, thank you. I'm not part of the band, I'm just a fan. <laughs> and um, so I've been a member of the band for just over four years, no, just under four years, in fact, my first gig was April 2014. So, uh, and I absolutely love it. It's, one of the best things that's ever happened to me joining uh, Dark Side of the Wall. They are a brilliant bunch of people, they're really talented musicians. I love each and every one of them. And uh, every time we, a gig comes around, I can't wait to play and, and say play, but sing with them. And it's always a joy. Yeah, so Dark Side of the Wall, don't forget it. They're out there and they're good. And um, they're a brilliant bunch of guys, really talented. And if you're watching in America, book them, fly them over. <laughs> Pay all their expenses Absolutely. and they'll give you a hell of a good show. Are you going to come as well? Yeah. Then? Hopefully. Yeah. I'll, I'll be chaperoning. <laughs> <laughs> Play tambourine. Yeah. yeah. Tune the roto toms, anything. Yeah, drum tech. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. So, so you, how about you? You've got, you've got your singing with Dark Side. Yeah. Your lead vocalist, lead guitarist. Ooh, excuse me. Rhythm guitarist. Yeah. Songwriter, producer, yeah. and kind of. other bits Focus. with with Kafka Diva. Kafka Diva. Yeah. So I'm also one third of Kafka Diva, who are another Midlands Originals outfit this time, and we write all our own songs. And I'm the lyricist, but Tony and I write together. Tony's our drummer, and my husband. Um, I know, hot. <laughs> and. Uh, uh, we write a lot together, we have done for years, we've, we've written music for, my goodness, ever since we first met, which is going on about 25 years. And you you know mm. some of Kafka Deep's music, you know one tune, definitely. Ah, that's you true. You've heard it at the beginning of this video, you'll hear it at the end. It's yeah. called Breathe, it's yeah. from their first album, Big Toes and Fingers, which is available to buy now. <laughs> Go to kafkadiva.com. Yes, that's this right. is an unashamed plug. <laughs> Um, so yeah, if you like Breathe, then go and check out our other music, and we've got yeah. another album coming out soon as well, which will be, we haven't got a date for the release yet, but it will be coming out sometime later in the spring, we're hoping sometime in May. And the new and, album uh, is called? The new album, this is the first time it's been um, world exclusive revealed, here. Yeah, it's going to be called Dysfunctional, and as I've been saying to people, it's completely autobiographical, it's a completely true story. So, yeah. yeah, there's going to be 12, 12 original tracks, and they're quite different from the tracks that are on Big Toast of Fingers. But they're also but from you've what been I've having some previews, I've been having you, some previews and, and yeah. what I've heard, they're quite different from each other as well, which is yeah, great. Yeah, they are. Because who wants to listen to 12 songs that all sound the same? Well, yeah, that's what we figured. And we thought, if we can write songs, if we can write songs, you know, create original music, why not do any style that, you know, is out there, just have a go. And uh, usually they turn out okay. Some of them are a bit. I haven't, heard, those ones on the album. <clears throat> I haven't heard enough one yet. So. Oh, that that you says don't. that tells me the quality control levels <clears throat> are very good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, quite, there's a couple <laughs> on the country <control> floor. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, is this enough to make you um, make your living and pay your way no, in the world? No, unfortunately not. So it's how do you more do of that? a labour of love, really. Yeah. That was a good album, yeah. that, <coughs> like, yeah, Yes, great. yes. Really but um, being a musician is something that um, Tony, Steve and I do. Um, that's the three of us in Kakadiva. We do for the love of it rather than because it brings us an income. Um, so, And the same with Dark Side of the Wall, that's something that we do part time. But we would love to be able to make a living out of, out of our music, but it's, you know, it's, the motivator is, to, is self expression, really. I always say that, that I write for self-expression rather than um, to gain an income from it. That is a bit of a... You're doing dream. it for love rather than Luca. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. So, but it's wonderful to know, even, even if people don't uh, 
buy a full album if they sort of download a track or just say that they enjoy listening to a CD that they've bought as a gig or something like that. That's really mm. massively rewarding because that's what, as a, as a songwriter, that's really what, the one thing that you want to, um, that, that I feel, you know, that I've wanted to achieve is to have people enjoying the music mm. that I have written or that we as a group have written and created. So you're yeah. making that connection? Yeah. Yeah. And because of, often, because of, a lot of the Kafka Diva lyrics are quite, yeah. we say satirical, there's a lot of satire and truth yeah. in them, but also some sarcasm. Mm. And, um, and a lot of them are quite sensitive as well. We sort of say there's a, they go from um, satire to sensitivity in, you know, in, in the songs, that people identify with our music. And we, I love that as a lyricist, I really, really love that. Do people ever wonder whether the <clears throat> lyrics are in any way autobiographical? Mm. I know, I know mm. there is one song on the first album which is about you and Tony. Yeah. But some of the other songs, and one or two of the songs on the new album. Yeah. yeah. Could there be confusion that, that they were? Oh, yes. I mean, yeah. I wondered about that because it's a, it's a really good question actually, Mr. J. But I have wondered that because I thought when people ask me what a song, one, one of the songs is, a, is about, and I thought I don't know, I don't know whether I should I should mm. reveal what um, what's inspired me to write that song. Sometimes it's obvious, or whether I should say what do you think it's about, you know, to the listener and say it's about what it means to you, rather than what I'm telling you it means because. It can be a tiny piece I, of poetry, it can be interpreted, great. not yeah. because well, I'm, I'm not, but, but you know, it can be inter interpreted that way is from a unique perspective of each person, each yeah, listener. Yeah, we all bring our own, our own experience and our own yeah. thought processes and our own lives yeah. into play when we're listening to a piece of music or Absolutely. reading a poem or, a, yeah. or watching a film or whatever. Yeah. Um, and to be told it's a straightforward X, Y, or Z, actually I think takes mm. away a pleasure. Yeah, I think so. So I think uh, it's something that when I am asked about, uh, mm. obviously like you say, with, there's a, a song on Big Toast and Fingers which is called Already There, which is a love song that I'm quite open to have written about, you know, my beautiful hubby. Um, but, but as a love song, people would identify with it, it's so clearly that, and people mm. will identify with it because they felt the same way about someone too. But but other songs that probably, I don't know, people would make their own decisions about, or it would be about somebody that they that they knew, or I don't know. Mm. So they make their Just own make interpretation. Their own. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. So Kafka Diva is music for self-interpretation? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You sound the advertising. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. And, and you like me are a person who likes to hide behind a microphone where mm, people can't see you. Very much so, yes. Why am I doing yeah. this? <laughs> <laughs> and your voiceovers. Yeah, yeah, well that's what I do for a job. Mm -hmm. And um, I really love it actually. I've been doing voiceovers for 10 years. But I, I suppose it's taken me quite a long while to sort of do my apprenticeship, so to speak, to learn um, how to interpret scripts. Um, in a more natural way, which when when we speak not was I say speak normally off, you know, in an off the cuff way, although I must seem quite awkward at the moment because <laughs> I've not really done this before. Um, we we speak because we speak in a way that is just we our thoughts are interpreted into speech instantly, so we're not thinking of how we're intonating. Mm. We sort of do that without even knowing we're doing it. And it's so clever, I think. Speech as opposed, is just the as most opposed to sounding thing. like you're reading what someone else has written. Yeah, for that's you. right. Yeah, and so we read in a totally different way to how we would speak normally. But you've done acting. Yeah. So how acting. much? Of, yeah, but that still, helps, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, I suppose so. Yeah, I wish I'd done more. Hmm. You know, getting into voiceover. I suppose it is kind of an extension of acting, and that was my dream job when I was a young person. I wanted to be a comedy character actress. I wanted to be Julie Walters. You still could. Oh, if only that would be Well, you couldn't be Julie Walters, because obviously yeah. she's that's already that part's already been <laughs> yeah. taken, but yeah. you could still do it. There's yeah. nothing to stop. Yeah, Buster Merrifield, you got yeah. into uh, 
I don't, I don't think you know, I've got the beard, you have. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> that was my dream job, mm. and it was one of those things that people always said to me, oh, it's the same with all sorts of careers that young people would say, oh, you know, I want to be something unusual that's not sort of a teacher or a, <clears throat> I don't know, the postman. train driver or a postman or, yeah, those sort of regular kind of sounding jobs. And um, people always say, oh, it's such a difficult oh, no. The Actors spend so much time not working, you know. And, and I was really put off doing that, even though just, it was all I ever really wanted to do. So coming back to, uh, or finding voiceover later in my life, um, through the opposite sort of through an employment with a, you know, a company that, it used to be a dye maker actually, they were a great company, very creative and I loved what they did. And that's how the opportunity to do voiceover came up and I, I sort of learned from there. Mm. It was like going from my dream of being character actress around the houses to doing lots of sort of sales jobs and receptionist jobs and basic sort of quite and paid in a lot of ways, you know, to then having my own business and coming back to acting but through a different medium yeah. yeah and just in the sort of a friend of mine said there's so many jobs within the acting sort of like infrastructure they're not just the sort of like the, the film actors that you see on the, the, the very top of the of the pyramid yeah. there's all of those jobs within it there's sort of the voiceover artist production there's post-production there's oh, mm. hundreds of technical jobs within them and mm. Foley artists and things. So there are jobs within that industry. So for anybody that would would want to sort of get into it, just just go and look and I don't think, be don't put off. No, and I think the thing is as well <clears throat> that I mean I like you. I mm. wanted to I wanted to be a musician and yeah. and a radio presenter. And I I'm not really a musician these days. I haven't played for a while, but I can. So we, we taught the camera to sleep uh, and the battery ran out <laughs> yeah, and, and then there was a power car. I know. And, you know yeah. We had to get Louise back down from Leicestershire. <laughs> uh, uh, and so, wherever you are in the world, um, I'm sure like me you'd like to thank Louise for sitting and having a chat. Thank and you. uh, you're very welcome. Mm. And so wherever you are in the world and whatever you're doing today, I hope it's a good one. And I also hope you can join her. No, not her. Her again tomorrow. <laughs>